Hello everyone. I know it has been quite some time since I released a chapter of my story. Rest assured, I am now working on it regularly and should be releasing regular chapters. So without further ado, grab yourself a large McDonald's meal and let's get into it. Chapter 7. The Rhino Man seemed to enjoy eating Dragonhawk Zero's severed bell end. Perhaps a little too much. Regardless, it was done. The tip was gone, chewed up and swallowed like a tiny piece of jerky. It couldn't have been particularly satiating for the Rhino Man, thought Ridian as he finally reached the beast, catching Dragonhawk Zero's mangled body mere milliseconds before it fell to the ground. The Rhino Man, having finished his phallic snack, let out a powerful roar. 50% Banshee shriek, one-seventh vampire laugh, and the rest, oh fuck, I don't know, ostrich mating call. Then, like a jackhammer, it brought down its massive gray arm in a karate chop towards Ridian's beautiful head. Within less than an instant, Ridian blocked the creature's attempted chop, holding its arm in place as he gazed respectfully into Dragonhawk Zero's eyes. It was only right that he should be able to gaze upon a thing of beauty before he perished, he thought. Thank you, Radian, said Dragonhawk Zero, as respectful as ever, even as he bled out. Save your strength. There's a good number of doctors here. I'm sure you're going to make it. Lied Ridian very convincingly as he easily held off the Rhino Man. I know I'm not going to make it. It's okay. All the strength of my ancestors gathered into one final kick couldn't save me. Couldn't make me useful. It's right that I die here. At least... He coughed and sputtered for a while. At least I... He coughed and sputtered again. At least I got to die fighting with you. Ridian thought better than to voice his observance that the two of them hadn't technically been fighting together, as he had been repeatedly waylaid by the seemingly endless stream of children, old people and workmen carrying large panes of glass from one side of the room to the other. No, he'd let Dragonhawk Zero believe he'd gone down fighting with his superior if it made him feel better about the pathetic way he had died tonight. You did your people proud. He said, Shame they all got wiped from the ghost world, but they all tried their best. The Rhino Man had now begun to wind up another karate chop with its other arm. Ridian had his hands full, one holding Dragonhawk Zero and the other the beast's original arm it used to chop him. As the attack hurtled down, Ridian took a deep breath and then, as the Rhino Man's second attempted chop came to within a quarter inch of Ridian's head, he blew out a powerful gust from his perfectly shaped lips, which flung the creature's arm back with such a force that it snapped in twain. Uh, Dragonhawk, I want you to know that you were a good acquaintance, said Ridian. That means more to me than I could ever put into words, replied Dragonhawk Zero. Well, why don't you give it a try, asked Ridian. Okay, I will. You're the kind of man that other men and women want to follow into the depths of hell and beyond. A true leader, not to mention a true American. Began Dragonhawk Zero. Sorry, but could you speak up? Interjected Ridian. Um, there's a lot of background noise in here, what with the crying mutant babies and this bloody rhino man. Of course, Ridian, I'm sorry. On top of those things I just mentioned, you always made me want to try harder to be more like... He began to trail off, but Ridian gave him a little slap so that he could finish off his final sentence. More like... You. Thus, Dragonhawk Zero's final breath left his lungs like a steam train headed out of the station. So long, buddy. You really could have been a great bounty hunter if you'd put in a little more effort. Be at peace. And with that, Redian carefully laid down his old acquaintance. It would have been a sad moment were it not for the emotionally encasing and regulating effects of his mind-body network, the stalwart impulse. He now turned his full, unbridled attention and perfectly controlled rage upon the Rhino Man. One of its grotesquely hulking arms was still held by Ridian's masculine grip, and the other, mangled and splintered from Ridian's breath attack, now dangled from its popped shoulder. Once more, Ridian caught a flicker of himself in that genetically putrid brute. Those eyes were rather handsome, even when surrounded by the sickly gray and bumpy flesh of the foul experiment's adulterated face. Whatever you are, Ridian said to the thing. You're not to blame. You didn't create yourself. You should never have come to be in the first place. And for a moment, the rhino man seemed to soften, its long, foul snout lips peeling back to reveal a set of horse-like teeth. And then, from within said teeth emerged a long, twisting black tongue, which undulated its way towards Ridian's diamond-shaped cheek and gave it a soft but incredibly dry little lick. In that instant... Redian could sense the small percentage of that monster's DNA, which was his own lineage, his child. But you ate the tip of Dragonhawk Zero's penis, and for that I can't forgive you. Then Ridian employed the use of his wildly compact musculature to yank the beast by its one remaining unbroken arm so that its gaping mouth was pulled into Ridian's face. His forehead scraped through the creature's mouth, dislodging and fracturing many of its teeth and severing its tongue in the process. 
Ridian then took hold of the rhino man's flapping hairy ears and used them to further pull the rhino man's head, mouth open, into his own face. The creature's bottom jaw immediately crumpled, cracking as the force of Ridian's grip and his rampart of a forehead challenged the integrity of the rhino man's biologically augmented skull. And now, as he moved through and past the rhino man's snout, with fragments of bone falling to the side like pieces of broken terracotta, he now grabbed the back of the rhino man's head, locking hand and wrist to perform one last mighty heave. The rhino man was like a scrapped auto in a car crusher as Ridian's forehead smashed through the beast's face, momentarily coming eye to eye before pushing through the skull and into the beast's brain. Finally, with a little bit more effort on Ridian's part, the rhino man's skull had been cut like a coconut into two distinct pieces, the juices from within bursting out like the refreshing coconut water they sell at extortionate prices in supermarkets, except this was blood, not coconut water. Holding the two broken halves of the rhino man's skull, Ridian now stood blood-soaked and fully nude from earlier as he surveyed the club. This had been quite the evening. Chucky Chinwagger Balboza tossed him a lit cigar, which he had a few puffs on before placing it in Dragonhawk Zero's mouth as a special goodbye gift. The club wasn't quite as full now. Many of the club attendees had either escaped or were simply dead at this point. Then Ridian remembered something. The babies, he exclaimed. Good Lord, cried Chucky Cuckolder Balboza. If any of them were to escape, we might have a worldwide rhino birth pandemic on our hands, interjected one of the doctors. Jesus Christ, shouted one of the club attendees who was lying in a bloody heap on the floor. That's right. There's so much we don't know about those infantile rhino men, but if they're anything like their immaculate father, they're going to breed faster than rabbits. Explained Ridian, putting on his metaphorical scientist's hat for a moment. Chucky Fred Durst Balboza grabbed a double barrel shotgun from behind the bar. I'll go after them, he cried. I always wanted to go on safari. Jesus Christ, killing babies? That's dark, said one of the remaining doctors. Yes, it is, doctor, replied Ridian, wanting to match a name to one of these doctors if he was going to become more of a main character. Quest, Bartholomew Quest, Dr. Bartholomew Quest, M.D., replied Dr. Bartholomew Quest, M.D. Dr. Quest, I know you took an oath to save lives, but right now I need you to take a shotgun, pistol, or heck, maybe just a big stick, and go after all of those baby rhino men with the bartender Chucky here and kill them before they can spread their seed around the world. I'd do it myself, but I've got to get Cigarilli here to a hospital, get him all patched up, and then torture him for information about the henchman he sent to murder my wife, explained Ridian. I understand, said Dr. Quest, cocking a rifle he seemed to have just now found. It's not a question of morality when the human race is at stake. Those babies die tonight. I agree, said Chucky. I've been a barman for far too long. This task to kill 13 mutant babies before they spawn a contagion of immaculate rhino offspring might just give me the purpose in life I've never before found. Great. I'm counting on you, lads. If any one of those babies survives, the entire human race may be in trouble. Replied Ridian, putting his full faith into these two men. I just hope that none of the mothers put up a fight, said Dr. Quest, pulling out a previously hidden machete from the inside pocket of his velvet blazer. A mother's instinct is incredibly strong. Even if the child is an unexpectedly birthed monster, they will give their lives to defend it. It's not an if, it's a when. And when it does happen, you've got to be ready to do what's necessary, replied Ridian. Don't worry, replied Dr. Bartholomew Quest, M.D. I'm not a fucking pussy. And with that, Chucky, baby murderer Balboza, and Dr. Bartholomew Quest hurtled up the spiral staircase in search of those 13 newborn mutant rhinos who may or may not have been capable of spreading a rhino-based contagion around the world. Ridian grabbed a bottle of bourbon from behind the bar and, after removing the cap, used it to wash the rhino blood from his almighty body. There had been a lot of revelations tonight. Danielle's murder that night six months ago, the use of his semen to create a genetically enhanced arm wrestler, the fact that ghosts exist. It was all so ridiculous. How was this the way his life was going? He had never made any grand plans for his life after his time in the various armed forces, except to marry Danielle help ghost write a few more of her sex lover's books, then have a few kids while arm wrestling on the side. He'd never imagined he'd become embroiled in an increasingly bloody and arduous fight for revenge against the creators of a creature born of his own demigod-like semen. After the bourbon washed away the chunks of flesh and tufts of rhino hair from his exquisite mullet, he took the hair dryer which Chucky the Big Spender Balboza kept behind the bar, dried himself off, and then quickly got dressed. 
As usual, his bulging penis barely fit into his tight white underpants. Now he headed into the back room where he had left Cigarilli around 12 and a half hours ago. There he was, still trapped inside the arcade unit, miraculously clinging to life. What the hell happened out there? He yelled feebly. A lot of shit that I'm holding you personally responsible for, replied Ridian. Is the rhino man dead? For now, said Ridian. You're still going to take me to the hospital? Yes. I can't have you dying before you spill the beans on which henchmen participated in the murder of my beloved Danielle. Replied Ridian, hoisting up the time crisis unit with one hand and slinging it onto his shoulder. I can just tell you now. We don't have to go through any sort of rigmarole, said Cigarilli through clenched teeth as various shards of glass from the arcade monitor worked their way deeper into his torso. Well, I do have a low tolerance for rigmarole, thought Ridian. Fine. He said, slamming the machine down into the ground once again. Who did you send? Who got their hands dirty for you when they killed Danielle? It was... Cigarilli began, the final flicker of life fading from his fat, lumpy little Danny DeVito body. Who was it? Bellowed Ridian. Emotions breaking through the remarkably powerful stalwart impulse. Ass, man, whispered Cigarilli as his eyes rolled back. Death had taken him. If Ridian hadn't been so staunch and unflappable, he might have needed to sit down. Ass, man! Ernest Adderley, his oldest acquaintance. Partner since the SEALs boot camp. He couldn't have done this. And yet... Ridian quickly ran around the room and took all the cash out of the deceased club patron's pockets. Probably $150,000, he estimated. Not a bad haul. He also got a few Rolexes and a special edition Zelda Nintendo Switch. Then he picked up a stiletto from the foot of a woman who'd been stamped to death and hurled it like a boomerang towards the bar, smashing countless bottles of expensive booze with his immaculate aim. Then, after swiping a match against his chest, he proceeded to set the bar aflame. He knew it probably wouldn't destroy everything, but it should slow down the cops from figuring out what happened here tonight. He didn't want the feds cop-blocking his revenge. I'm coming for you, ass man, he said to himself as he raced up the spiral staircase. So you better watch your ass, man. When Ridian arrived at the top of the stairs, having climbed over several corpses of those club attendees who had tried to escape but whose rhino-related wounds had proven too fatal, he noticed one of the mothers whose baby he had delivered earlier that night head blown away by a point-blank double-barrel shotgun blast. It looked as if Chucky and Dr. Quest weren't fucking around. On the floor by the exit was one of the rhino babies, which seemed larger than before, chopped up by Dr. Quest's machete, and from the looks of it, curb stomped 17 or 18 times. With the rate at which that infant was growing, said Ridian to himself as he ran towards an alleyway. Those rhino babies could become fully grown within 24 hours. In the alleyway, Ridian found what he knew would be there. Dragonhawk Zero's perfectly polished Harley Davidson Road King. He took out the key he'd swiped from his dead acquaintance's corpse and started the ignition. The front lamp illuminated the alleyway, revealing Dr. Quest and Chucky Balboza, beating the shit out of one of the mothers as she tried, foolishly, to protect her horrendous and dangerous offspring. Chucky, blood rage, Balboza looked up, blinking in the dazzling lights, his face awash with the look of a man doing necessary violence, and then, when he noticed it was Ridian, gave a thumbs up. Ridian nodded in approval before kicking the hog into action, speeding away in a wheelie towards the place he knew for certain that Ernest Assman Adderley would be at midday. O. Oh, Thompson's Pool Bar. Thanks for listening. Next time, Ridian is going to be causing a major ruckus at O. Thompson's place. How many will die? You'll have to wait and see. Long term, I'm going to continue writing this novel until it is complete to my satisfaction. It is going to be very long. To those of you who care, I intend to self-publish the book when it is complete. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the story as it progresses, so please make sure you comment and leave a like on the video. Much love. Spatch Adams out.